Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day today and I hope you're having a great month so far. It's me again, Kemi Oyedepo, and I'm here with the Crisis Proof Your Family or CPYF tip for this month. I really hope you're enjoying these tips I'm sending your way. I hope you're putting them to work, but most importantly, I hope they're working for you out there. Thank you so much for all the feedback you've sent our way. I really appreciate the love, but most importantly, I'm glad to know that you are able to pick a thing or two from CPYF because that's the ultimate goal to enrich Rich your family life and I hope it keeps working for you all out there so my tip this month is all about trust I want to briefly speak to you about the importance of trust 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 is so vital for any relationship that wants to remain healthy particularly the marriage relationship in fact something I love to say and I believe in so wholeheartedly is this marriage is trust because everything about marriage revolves around trust I mean when it comes to intimacy whether it's spiritually emotionally or even sexually trust is required when it comes to dealing with our finances trust is required and the list goes on and on and on the point is that when it comes to marriage, trust is everything. You just can't do without it. It's one of the backbones that keeps a marriage or any relationship standing. I don't know how any relationship can thrive without trust. Now, one of the definitions of trust is this. It is having a firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability of a person. So it's being able to rely on a person, being able to rely on their character. So trust is vital. It is absolutely everything. In fact, one thing I love to say is this, that any relationship that is void of trust is a relationship that is doomed. I mean, it may hang on for some time, but ultimately, if the trust issue is not dealt with appropriately, it will come crumbling down. So it's important that we work on the trust that we have in our relationships. So in this tip, I'm going to give you a few pointers that I know would help you concerning this subject matter. Now, it's not the only tips that are out there, but I think these are some that will help you. Number one, trust is a growing force. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. I mean, it's something that requires our patience, our energy, our time, our efforts. It requires everything from us. And because it requires so much from us, one thing I love to tell couples and even remind myself of is this, the trust that we build must be protected with all that we are. We must guard it wholeheartedly because trust, it takes so long. I mean, it takes so much for, from us to build trust, but it can be destroyed in a matter of seconds. So it's important that we guard it with all that we are. Don't allow anything, don't allow anyone to be able to break the trust that you have. So that's point number one. It is a growing force. So we must be willing and ready to put in all the work required to ensure that it follows the due process. Number two, trust is based on dependable or predictable behavior. You have to prove yourself to be trustworthy. You can't as a man just say, well, she should just trust me. Or as a woman, you can't do the same thing. It is based on proofs. It has to be seen. In fact, I like to say that trust is an action word. We don't just say it. It has to be seen. It is based on dependable behavior. So as a man, let your yes be yes. As a woman, let your no be no. Don't ever allow yourself to be in a situation where you say something and your spouse or whoever you're in a relationship with has to start snooping behind your back to find out if what you have said is indeed true. Don't be okay with that. In fact, I love to tell couples, don't turn your spouse or whoever you're in a relationship with into a detective or a private investigator. Let your yes be yes. Ensure that you are reliable. Ensure that you are dependable. Make yourself trustworthy. So it's based on dependable or predictable behavior. Number three, number four, anyway, um, the next point is this. Trust is based on openness. It can only thrive where there is openness. In fact, one thing I've seen is this. Any man that cannot be absolutely open with his wife or whoever he's in a relationship with, um, he simply doesn't trust her. If she, he doesn't want to tell her about his finances, his past, whatever else, it's because he doesn't trust her. And the same thing goes for any woman who's not open with her husband or whoever she's in a relationship with. Trust can only thrive where there is openness. And openness is required for intimacy in marriage. But let me just say this. Anywhere that someone is open, completely open with you, don't use that information to attack them in the future. Because sometimes you find one person withdraws, they don't want to say anything anymore because every time they tell the other person about their sins or their past mistakes, it's held against them. They hang it over their heads, um, they use it to wound them. Don't allow yourself to get to that point. Otherwise, the person would not be open with you. And openness 
is required. Okay, I'm sure you got that. And the next point is this, trust is enhanced by measurable change or growth. And this is particularly where there's been, the trust has been broken. It can only be enhanced by measurable change or growth. So if, that, if you've hurt somebody and they cannot see measurable change or growth in you, it will be difficult for them to trust you. So it is so important that you begin to you know, prove yourself. Remember we said it's based on proofs. It's so important that you prove yourself, let them see it. And you know, if your trust was at 100% before and it gets broken by either yourself or the other person, once it gets broken, don't expect it to go to 100 overnight. It still has to follow the due process. It's a gradual process. You will not get there overnight, but ensure that they can see the changes in you. And let me just say this. Trust can really be built back up where there's forgiveness and there's consistency. Where you've been offended, where you're the one who has been hurt, you have to forgive. Where you're the one who was the offender, <laughs> you have to be consistent if you want the trust to be built back up. The next point is this, trust is based on consistency, on confidentiality, sorry, confidentiality. Whatever the other person tells you, your spouse or whoever you're in a relationship with, whatever they tell you, let it stay with you. Let them know that anything they're saying to you will never be heard outside unless they told you <laughs> to tell somebody else. It is based on confidentiality. Sometimes you find someone who says, oh, I'll just tell my best friend and it will stay with him or her and your spouse should be your best friend anyway, but that's for another day. You know, they say, I'll just tell my sister or my mom or my brother or whoever else, but I guarantee you it never really just stays with them. It goes round in a circle until it gets back to the person who brought the information out in the first place and the consequences can be devastating so whatever you are told if you are not um, told to say it to somebody else keep it in your heart which is my next point trust comes from the heart it is built from the heart and is maintained in the heart in Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 11 concerning the Proverbs 31 woman we're told that, that the heart of our husband safely trusts in her. So everything about trust begins from the heart and is maintained in the heart. So those are a few pointers for this tip that I think that you can pick something from that will help your relationship, whether you're married or you're in courtship. And let me just say this for those who have had, you know, the trust broken. Please know that there is nothing God cannot mend. As long as you're willing to put in the work, he is willing to come in and turn your story around for good. So please get the counseling that is required. Godly counseling. Beware of evil counsel. Get people, go to people who would use the word of God as their guide when they are counseling you. But be open-minded and open-hearted and give God's word a chance to work in your relationship. And whatever has been broken or destroyed, I guarantee you that he would mend it, he will restore it, and he will make it anew for you in Jesus' name. So those are my tips. Um, those are my pointers for this tip. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed it. I did because it's for me too. It's not just for you all out there. I enjoyed it too. But I hope you put it to work because that's the most important thing. It's when you begin to put it to work that you'll see that it begins to work for you. As always, I love to hear from you. Um, send us an email at cpyfamily at gmail.com. Check us out on Instagram at cpyfamily. Check out the Facebook page, Crisis Proof Your Family. Share that page. Like that page. It's not just for you. There's someone out there who needs it but most importantly yes that blog www.crisisproofyourfamilyblog.com there's so much on there that would, can enrich you as an individual and ultimately your family life so go on there and check it out so until next time i'll see you soon or rather you'll see me you'll see me soon um take good care of yourself and remain blessed god bless you thank you so much for listening to me bye-bye